What's going on guys? In today's video, I'm gonna share with you everything you need to know about investing in startups. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through and answer the 10 most common questions people have before they get started investing in startup companies. I'm gonna answer the questions, what is a startup? And in the realm of investing, how is investing in a startup different than investing in a publicly traded company? Why should you invest in startups? A few different reasons. How do you make money investing in startups? What is your return on investment? And how long will that take specifically? What is the worst case scenario if you invest in a startup? Like what is the absolute worst case scenario? And what is the best case scenario if you choose to put your money in a startup investment. How much money do you need to get started? This is a really common question. Do you have to be a millionaire to get started? We're gonna talk about the different ways that you can get involved, exactly when you should invest in terms of your financial and investing career, if you will put it like that. At what point does it make sense to start investing in startup companies? And how much money should you invest in startups? It's, it's, it can get pretty complicated, we're gonna simplify it. How should you analyze a startup company? This is probably the most important part here, we're gonna spend a good amount of time here talking about the different things that you should look at when it comes to analyzing a startup before you actually put an investment. And then finally, and potentially the most important, after you've analyzed the company, well, how do you get in front of the company? How do you find these startups to invest in? And I'll share a few different ways that you can find the hottest startups that are gonna give you the best return on investment. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Ferris Sabetti. I'm the co-founder and CEO of My Swim Pro. And over the last five or so years, we've built My Swim Pro to be a global technology and media company with a distributed team that spans over 10 different time zones. So in this video, I'm gonna come at it from the perspective of the entrepreneur who has raised close to a million dollars across venture capital, angel investment, and of course, equity crowdfunding. If you haven't ever checked out the video I've done, how we raise over $600,000 online through equity crowdfunding on WeFunder, check it out, linked in the description below. I've also made a number of different angel investments through some of the platforms that we're gonna talk about in this video. So check out those linked in the description below as well. I also made an additional video on how to invest in startups, analyzing the pros and cons. It's a little bit more advanced than this video. This one's really talking about from a beginner perspective. I'll link that one in the description below. On this channel, I talk about startups, investing, and entrepreneurship, how to take your business to the next level. If you have an idea for getting started in the business, how to take those first steps and the right entrepreneurial mindset that you need to take action and make it happen. If that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like this video, and actually just make that first investment in me if you really find value in this content by liking this video and subscribing to the channel, and let's begin. Now, the first thing you wanna understand is what is a startup in the first place? We toss around this, this terminology, this jargon, but it's really important to understand how a startup differs from a publicly traded company. And I've outlined three main ways. The first is truly in the business model. Now, I don't mean the actual business model that the startup has, it's if there is a business model that's already been established and that is ready to scale. You see, a publicly traded company already has a business model that is working to some level of capacity. And now in a public market, the company is looking to raise funds to scale it. So they've already sort of solved a major problem and now they're looking to take it to the next level. A startup on the other hand, hasn't really figured it out yet. They're trying to figure it out. They're looking for that repeatable and scalable business model. And so when you invest, you might be investing in the potential of a future business model that hasn't really been proven out yet necessarily and that's really finding that scale. So that's a fundamental difference. And we talk about scale. Scale is really the size and the, the amount of impact that this company is already having from an impact perspective on the world or a financial impact. Oftentimes a startup may make zero revenue, right? They might be pre-revenue company. They might make a little bit of cash. Maybe they're making $10,000 a month, $100,000 a month, a million dollars a month, depending on what they do. Whereas a publicly traded company is oftentimes doing hundreds of millions, maybe billions of dollars in revenue or profit per quarter. So the scale we're talking about is several orders of magnitude different that repeatable business model has already been found and it's really being put it's being put to work and it's really showing in the scale. Another core difference when it comes to investing is the ownership structure. So when you're investing in a publicly traded company, the company is by definition public. In other words, the shareholders, when you invest and you, and you trade stocks, you are actually becoming a part owner of a publicly traded company and you have the ability to transfer ownership in a public 
market. The ownership structure in a startup, it's private. In other words, only the founders or a few investors have control and you can't, e you can't easily transfer shares of stock in the company in a public forum like you can in a publicly traded company. So that's a really big distinction between startup companies and private and public companies. Number two, why should you invest in startup companies? Now I have three outline, three reasons outlined, and these are not in necessarily the order that you might wanna look at them, but they're the order that I believe. And number one is to really support the vision of the company. You have the opportunity to bring the entrepreneur's vision to life, to help them and support them in empowering the world or, or saving money or helping some kind of an industry. Whatever it is that the company is trying to do, as the early stage investor, you have the ability to, to get connected with the founding team, to invest in a team of 10, 20, 30, 50 people or less, and to really get behind them at the early stage. Now you might also think this is a great way to diversify your portfolio. You wanna invest in things that make your portfolio not only interesting to look at, and hey, you know, I invested in this startup over here, that startup over there that's doing something really cool, but from a financial perspective, to diversify and give you the chance to step number three, have an insane profit opportunity. Now a lot of people will put this as number one as to why they would wanna invest in a startup company. For me, it's important, obviously, you wanna have a financial return, but you have the opportunity in a startup company to have insane profit potential. You could invest you know, $50,000 in what could be the next Facebook or Google, and that $50,000 can be $1 billion, right? The return on investment is absolutely insane. You're talking about you know, 10, 100, 1,000 times return in a matter of five to seven years. These types of returns are really not possible in any other investment class. And this investing in a startup is truly an alternative investment. So you have to treat it as such, and we'll talk about that in just a second. How do you make money and how long will it take? This is really important to understand before you get interested at all in investing in startups. You have to understand the risk reward. And in that video, I talk about the pros and cons. I overview this pretty, pretty extensively. But when we're talking about how do you actually make money, when you invest in a startup, the only way you're gonna make a return on your investment is one of five ways. Number one, the company goes public. There is an initial public offering, an IPO, and now this private company converts into a publicly traded company, at which point there is a public value on these shares, and in the public market, you know, during the day you can trade this stock, and someone you can transfer ownership very easily. It might be worth more, at any given day, it may be worth less, but you have this liquidity that's offered through an initial public offering. That is extremely unlikely, but it could happen, and we'll talk about the risk-reward profile and how you can manage that in just a little bit. Uh, another way that you can uh, return on your investment is through a merger acquisition. So a big company basically eats the startup company. Maybe the two companies are both relatively large, but you might have a public-traded company you know, buying this small startup, or you could have another private company buying, you know, this is an example of Facebook buying Instagram. Uh, there's a number of different examples that you see on TechCrunch in the headlines. This is actually much more common for the early stage investor to see a return. The chance of an IPO is much smaller. The likelihood of a merger or acquisition type of event is much higher. The return is potentially lowest but it's a much more common scenario. The third option is similar, it's a private equity acquisition. So rather than a actual you know, company that operates taking in this, this smaller startup into their portfolio, if you will, the private equity firm will specifically look to either invest and buy out all of the investors or take in the entire company to their portfolio of investments of their companies and they'll do whatever they want with it. But as the investor, you will get liquidity through this private equity acquisition. The fourth is either through dividends or some kind of a revenue share, it really depends on the structure of the startup of the investment, and you could get paid like a uh, publicly traded company through dividends or uncut like a publicly traded company through this revenue share concept. I will say this is really, really unlikely, and it's, it's most likely that the firm or that you're investing in will not be disclosing this unless it's a brewery or something like that. But for the sake of like a tech company that you're investing in, it will most likely not be dividends or revenue share. Now the fifth way, and potentially the most 
evolutionary way to see liquidity as an early stage investor is through the secondary market. Now this is something that is not really developed yet. Uh, so in other words, the way this works is you will make an, an investment in one of the first rounds of, of the company, and then 18 months later, there is another round of financing taking place. And this is an opportunity for you to get out of the startup because a new investor will buy out the early investors. And there could be in the future, a secondary market sort of between this private financing early stage and the public market, where in that intermediary, you can actually have a sale of shares in these privately traded companies. So if, you want to, if you're more interested in that, just Google it and you can learn more about the secondary market and what that might look like. What is the worst case scenario if you invest in a startup company? To be honest, you could lose 100% of the investment. The way this works is, let's say you invest $100 or $1,000 in a startup, you know, 18 months down the road, you know, the team falls apart, not seeing good traction, decide not to raise additional financing, and the company just shuts down. In which case, you will, it's unlikely that you will see any kind of a return on your investment. If you're lucky, you might get partial return. In other words, if you invest that hundred or thousand dollars, you'd be lucky to get 20 or $500 maximum. But there's a likelihood that you could actually lose 100% of your invested principal. Uh, now, what is the best case scenario it truly is unlimited. If you invest in a startup company that's hot and you invest in one of the early stages, now it's not unlimited. I mean, it's not like, oh, we're gonna print trillions of dollars for you, but it really is unlimited in the sense of if you invest $1,000 and you were one of the first investors in Amazon or Microsoft or Facebook or Google, and you were to hold on to that investment and merely not get diluted that much and maintain that position over the course of 10 or 20 years, that $1,000 would be worth nine figures. It would be worth you know, maybe $100 million. Now the chances of picking one of these, not, not unicorn, I don't know what they call a trillion dollar company, the chance of investing in a company under a $10 million valuation and then seeing that $10 million valued company expand to a trillion dollar market cap company over say 10 or 20 years is extremely unlikely. And because of that, you don't wanna make your bet on the assumption that you will win 100% of the time and lose never. That's really not how it works. If anything, you're more likely to have your money turn to zero. But if you invest enough and you have good diversity, which we're gonna talk about in just a second, then you can actually increase your upside of potential gains. So when we're talking about how much money do you actually need to get started, it really depends on the type of startup investment that you're making. If you're investing in something called equity crowdfunding, thank you to the Jobs Act as of 2016, companies, private companies can publicly solicit funds and you can invest for as little as 10 dollars on some of these platforms like Republic. Other platforms have a minimum set at $100 to make your investment. And also the, the companies that are raising money can also set their own minimum above that. So maybe it's $500 to get into a company that's raising regulation CF on WeFunder, for example. Now, another way that you can invest in some other platforms is alongside a syndicate, someone like a Jason Calacanis or a Tim Ferriss, and these investors are gonna put in maybe 25 or $50,000, and they'll have a couple hundred or a few thousand investors join them at smaller amounts, and they can be as low as $1,500, $2,000, $3,000, a single investment in a company. And then if you get to more of a professional round, I don't know what we call it professional, but these professional investors, you know, accredited investors, people who have, you know, income over $200,000 a year, or they have liquid assets over $1 million in the United States are shown by the, you know, the government as, you know, an, a professional investor. And if you're investing in one of these private rounds, then you're looking at a check size anywhere from $25,000 to $50,000 or more. Oftentimes, early stage in investors will join together and you'll have 10 investors each put in $50,000 and that'll be a small angel round of half a million dollars. When should you invest your money? Now, this is really important because you don't really wanna get into this until you're ready. And this has to do with a few different things. I have three outlined. The first is after you pay off your debt. If you have debt, you should not be investing in any kind of a startup whatsoever. Now this is different than debt, say, in a real estate portfolio. This is referring to debt as in credit card debt, college student loans, things like that. If you have massive debt, you should really not be investing in startups. You should pay that off right away. Put your capital, instead of into a startup, into your own financial situation to be in a better spot. You should also only invest 
after building an emergency fund, right? Because when you invest in a startup, it's illiquid. You can't pull your money out. There isn't really a secondary market that exists where you can just decide to sell your investment, not like a publicly traded stock where you can decide, you know what, we're gonna sell this and I'm gonna liquidate and get my cash. You can't do that. So you have to have an emergency fund. You know, we're talking three, six, 12 months of living expenses, runway, completely taken care of, and now you've got some fluffy money that you're looking to invest. And of course, after investing in less risky asset classes, this could be equities, you know, publicly traded companies, investing, you know, dollar cost averaging through one of these diversified portfolio accounts like a wealth front or something like that. Maybe you have real estate investments, right? You do all of that and then you consider investing in startups. And how much should you invest? Generally, the rule of thumb is five to 10% of your portfolio should be in alternative investments. Really easy example of why five to 10% makes sense. Let's say you have a portfolio of investing $100,000 per year. That's how much you're allocating and you can, you can afford because of your income or whatever. And you're gonna put, let's say 10% in these alternative investments. If you invest in say 10 startup companies at $1,000 each, because you don't wanna put all your eggs in one basket, you wanna diversify within that portfolio of the asset class of startups. So let's say you invest $1,000 in 10 different companies and that makes up 10% of your $100,000 portfolio. Worst case scenario, it was you completely lose all 10 of those companies go to nothing, right? The best case scenario is one of those companies returns 1,000 times. It might not happen every year, but if you invest over a period of five, 10 years and you're pretty good at stock picking, maybe you're not gonna get a 10,000 X return, but you'll probably end up getting a 10 X return or a hundred X return if you invest in 10 startups per year over a period of time. And that will completely transform what your entire portfolio looks like. And that 10% allocation will return higher than your entire portfolio put together over the 10 years if you can get something like a, a 1,000 or 10,000 X return. That's assuming that all your other investments completely fail. So it's unlikely that you're gonna be on the extreme ends of that, but it's a really smart idea to diversify your portfolio and put five to 10% into a number of different startups on a regular basis. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Now, how should you analyze a startup? This is really important. In a publicly traded company, you can look at you know trailing PE, you can look at future PE, you can look at the 10K and you can join earnings calls and you can, you can look at a track record of the company in a startup, yes, you can look at the Form C. Uh, all startups have to file this with the SEC if they're doing a regulation CF equity crowdfunding. You look at the pitch deck. You wanna understand these core six things. You wanna fundamentally understand the problem that this startup is trying to solve. Again, you can't look at entirely just the financials. You have to look at things like, what is the problem they're trying to solve? Is there competition? Are there other products in the market that are trying to solve this? How is this problem currently being addressed? And what is the solution by this company? And how are they positioned to solve this problem in an innovative and creative way? What is the market size of this problem? What is the total addressable number of people or businesses that can actually benefit by this problem being solved? And what is the dollar amount and how fast is this market growing? Is it a market that's shrinking or is it something that could be 10 times the size over the course of the next few decades? You wanna look at the traction that the business has. And the earlier the stage of the business, the more difficult this specific element is because there's a lot less traction. This isn't a publicly traded company where you can just look at the last 10 years of operating history. You wanna look at the finances. You wanna look at what does the cap table look like? Who are the prior investors in the company? And would you be investing alongside these investors? And then you wanna look at the team. The team might be the most important thing to look at the earlier stage of the company because there is no traction, so you're betting on the team to make sure that they can execute on this problem. And you wanna make sure that you have good team market fit. We talk about product market fit, and an established company has already figured out the business model. They already have some kind of product market fit. You can't have product market fit unless you have founder, team, product, you can't have product market fit until you have team market fit. So making sure you have the right team for the job, make sure you have the right entrepreneurial insight to evaluate this company and really use your gut feeling here. This is where looking at the fundamentals of a publicly traded company will win. That is the best investors, they don't invest on emotion. Similarly, you don't wanna invest entirely on the fundamentals 
in this case, but you wanna use that little bit of gut feeling. You have to really believe in the entrepreneur and the team, and you have to have some kind of entrepreneurial insight as to why this company is going to win. Most startups fail. Most startups return zero for the investor. So why is this company going to be any different? Again, this is not a publicly traded company where at the very worst, the company will, it could go bankrupt, but more likely than not, the stock will just become devalued over time and you'll end up losing a little bit of money. In a startup, the risk is very high, the reward is huge, but you have to figure out some reason why you feel convicted in investing in this specific company. Hopefully, it's an industry that you understand and you can bring something to the table more so than just the average person looking at this specific company. How do you find these startups? So you're committed, all right, I'm gonna invest you know, five to 10% of my portfolio into these alternative asset class, and now I'm gonna look for startups. How do I find startups? So there's four different ways. Number one, you could be networking with entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs know when other entrepreneurs are taking those first steps. And don't believe the media hype of, oh wow, this company just got started and they raised $20 million and now they're gonna raise their next round six months later. That's most of the time not how it works. Entrepreneurs are working on their venture for a relatively long period of time. In the startup world, that means months, maybe years, before they actually raise any kind of outside financing. And the, and the entrepreneurial network will connect you with those opportunities because they're looking for the most helpful individuals to take the company to the next level. And if you have skills and expertise in a specific industry and cash to back it up, entrepreneurs wanna talk to you. Number two, professional angel networks. Now there's a number of groups, both for entrepreneurs, for investors that you can be a part of, but don't really believe in any of that if they charge a lot of money to be a part of that. That's pretty lame. The best startups will find the best uh, investors and likewise vice versa. Uh, number three, uh, there are startup fairs and events that you can go to. Entrepreneurs can go to meet investors. Investors can go to you know startup fair where there's 100 startups that each have a table. You can meet with them, learn about who's doing interesting things, stay connected with them, and over time, you can make that investment if they decide to fundraise, whether it's through this professional round where maybe the check minimum is $50,000, or something some more simple with a syndicate online through something like Seed Invest, $1,500, or if they do an equity crowdfunding round, you can get involved at a much lower cash level. And now the fourth, and probably the most important, if you've made it to the, so far in this video, thank you so much, but this is where you actually find the startups. You find these startups on platforms like AngelList, Seed Invest, WeFunder, Republic. These are the platforms that these startups will actually list on similar to a public company listing on the NASDAQ or something like that, and being able to be on a, on a stock exchange. In a similar way, these startups will do an open public offering for a segmented period of time. It might only be three weeks, it might be three months. And in that period of time, you have the unique opportunity to invest in this startup company. It's a really rare opportunity because once the company closes the round, you can no longer invest. You can no longer pull your money out, you can no longer put money into the company. So it's really important to keep an eye on these platforms. If you're interested, I'll put a link in the description on not only how you can analyze startups, but also how you can find them on these platforms. So check it out, linked in the description below. Again, if you made it so far to this part in the video, thank you so much, I really appreciate it. If you haven't already invested in the subscribe button and the like button, please do so. We really like to see you guys at the next video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Anything I left out, let me know, we'd love to see it. Keep hustling.